Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's Mr. Betcher and Brian for Breaking Down Security. Yes, yes. Welcome. So this week, uh, it, it, you know, it's been a it's been a month since uh, since you've heard our our pretty voices just by ourselves. We don't have a guest this week. You know, we had uh, two weeks of Phil Beyer, who is uh, the information security uh, director. director. Yes, God, dog, man. I don't know why I can't remember that. He's an awesome guy. It's, I feel bad. So, yeah, we had uh, information security director for uh, for a consulting firm in Austin come in and talk uh, with us about setting up a information security program, which I, I found highly, highly educational and, and definitely worth your time to listen. Yeah, that's right. He talked about the five areas of focus that we need to try to implement when, not try, we need to implement when building a uh, successful information security program so th- those are the essential areas yeah. yeah without any one of those five you're looking at you're not having a, a proper proper ism you know program yeah there's going to be holes yep and then you know we had last week uh, two weeks ago and last week we had georgia Weitman on i got it right this time georgia Weitman. i didn't call her weedman yeah good job I'm just i'm just flubbing everything this week so well, she talked about a book she wrote. I after we did the podcast, I realized you know we should have probably talked about the smartphone penetration framework that she created because that's kind of a big deal too. Um, yeah, she uh, she helped develop that. Actually, she is the developer and owner of that. Uh, you know, she's going to be speaking at Black Hat this year. So if you haven't got tickets to Black Hat, you probably can't go and watch her. But she's going to be doing two classes on exploit development. And I actually, uh, I was actually glad to have her on. I just, you know, asked her if she wanted to be on the podcast on Twitter. And she said, yeah, sure, sign me up. I, I think uh, she brought a very unique viewpoint in that a lot of people, when they go into a company to do a pen test, they don't think about the fact that most of the mobile phones and, you know, for some companies, tablets and 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 are, are set up in like uh, like BlackBerry was with the enterprise services. So a lot of people and a lot of companies don't think about pen testing those devices when they're uh, going in to do a pen test. But that could be a very, very valid vector, especially if somebody's downloaded a malware app that they didn't know about. And we know that the, the app stores for, I, know, I don't know so much for Apple, but I know for Google they've had, Charlie Miller has had malware apps on, you know, the, the app store, he talked about it when he came to Austin uh, about a year, two years ago. Yeah. And it's, it's valuable because, well, you don't think, well, people's cell phones, they're not connected to my production network. And, but you know, there's emails and things on them that, uh, you know, and texts that people have, you can gain a lot of, uh, breadcrumbs, right. From that information. Exactly. I mean, how many people would, you know, send a password reset SMS text or, Hey, you know, we, you know, this is Bob from accounting. I need to have my password reset when, in fact, Bob's account's already been compromised or ha- we have access to Bob's account. We just need his password. So right. I don't have my computer, but I need you to reset my password and, e- and send it to me over the SMS. Boom. Automatically got Bob's password from the IT weasels. Yeah. And I've had uh, people send passwords in emails that I didn't need. And I go to them and say, hey, don't send your passwords on it in an email to uh, like a whole group of people. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that the beauty of that is they don't have a leg to stand on when you, they can't go, well, but, 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 well, they know they're not supposed to do that. And that's a universally bad thing to do. And they can't say, well, you know, it's okay this time because it's just not the case. So what we, you know, I found, I found Georgia's uh, point of view about uh, mobile and, and, you know, what she was doing with mobile would be very important. And if you are a pen tester who's doing engagements, you might want to think about asking the companies that you, you, you're you doing pen tests on, hey, let me, uh, you know, we need to probably check your mobile fingerprint and, and find out or footprint and see what, you know, you're, you're sharing on your mobile and what I can get off of that. So. Yeah. And then we talked about, you know, the education she's trying to bring to uh, newcomers in the industry as well. And that's what, that's why she wrote her book, right? Education. Yep. 
Yeah. And, you know, uh, she's having some exciting things going on. Uh, if you don't listen to the podcast, she's uh, giving her talk at Black Hat on exploit development. She's got two classes. One is full and one is 75% full. So if you have tickets to Black Hat, you might want to get in on that class if you're interested in her class on exploit development. And then she told us after, not after, but she told us after the, the Black Hat, she's going to be going over and helping uh, Johnny Long with Hackers for Charity. She's going to be spending some time in Uganda helping him out, which uh, I thought was very admirable. And, and uh, that, that, that organization definitely has our, our support here at the, the Breaking Down Security Podcast. Mm-hmm. So, All right. Uh, enough of that and you know if you want to listen to those you can go back and listen there's about four weeks worth there and uh, they're all really really very excellent so this week our talk is on SQL map and why are we talking about SQL map why are we talking about SQL map well we want to talk about SQL map because um, in my opinion and a lot of people's opinion it's um, the best SQL injection tool out there uh, that's actually free. So, yeah. um, you know, I wanted to talk about it because uh, I wanted to stress that, you know, pen tester tools are really cool and they have all these exploits, but you can also use these as a defender to your advantage as well. You know, the tools and techniques used in the four phases of pen testing, which are recon, mapping, Re- discovery, and exploitation. Uh, they can be used by blue teamers to shore up their defenses. So today we're going to talk about one of the more powerful and useful exploitation tools, SQL Map. Yep. So SQL Map, uh, you know, like like Mr. Betcher said, it was free, and it has a lot of extra features in it. One of, one of the things I have noticed is that the man page for it is is incomplete at best because if you look at the help section if you just do sql map dash hh it'll give you like a full help section there are a lot of things in sql map that you won't find in the man page and you know i don't want to go back to georgia again but if you're you're not going to find the proper documentation on some of these things in sql map without going to the dash h for for help uh like for instance the the man page doesn't mention anything about the the tor onion router network that sql map will use if you have a tor uh, proxy running on your box you can use sql map through the tor network it's tor enabled which is important if you're trying to do um testing and you don't want um the system to know where you're coming from for anonymity purposes or if you're um, on the on the blue side that that's a good point you you could be um you know, trying to test your intrusion detection system. So you may want to see if if your IDS is, is actually, you know, uh, fine-tuned to detect uh, things like SQL map, which may be coming from different places. Sure, and if you're doing it from your desk on the internal network, your IDS is automatically going to allow that traffic, I, I would imagine. So if you can use something that's going to you know, if you don't want to use like a VPN service, which may be illegal to, to connect to from your company, I don't know if Tor would be illegal for some people <laughs> to connect from a company. But, you know, it's just another way that's, uh, that's I would say, less hazardous. And um, you can use it to, to, you know, test your IDS and IPS. The good thing I noticed was for, for people who don't know how to use SQL Map, if you do uh, SQL map dash dash wizard, it has a simple like help you along program like because uh, it's written in Python. So I didn't know the, that. It has, the, is it a graphical wizard? No, of course not. Ew, that's <laughs> gross, dude. I can't even believe you suggested that. Oh. So no, it's, it's all command line. So you, you type in SQL map dash dash wizard and then it'll say uh, the, I, the full URL of the database you want to try. And that's the like the dash U. And what it tells you is as you're going along, it'll tell you, you know, it, it'll have you fill in what you need and it'll show you the switch you need to use. And if you don't want to use the wizard in the future. So, you know, for, for normally you'd go SQL map dash U, the URL of the, the host. And then there's a couple of other switches you'll need to use to, to get yourself along, uh, which I found which I found interesting because I don't I don't think uh, uh, any other tool that we have out there 
uh, has a like a you know get to know you wizard <laughs> kind of thing. Maybe I should um, use the wizard because uh, I was trying to uh, SQL inject a um, an application I wrote years ago. You know, and I at the time I wasn't even thinking about because I I had to stand it up real quickly and I wasn't thinking about SQL injection, so I was pretty sure it was vulnerable, but I could not get it working. Um, you know, against this particular app, maybe I'm just a really good, uh, lucky, you know, developer when it came to that. But you know, who knows? I need to see the uh, wizard, I guess. So so what you're saying is your app is bulletproof and unhackable, and that. You welcome any comers who are going to attempt to hack your your application. Do you want to maybe give out the uh, URL for that? Uh, you want the IP? I'll give it to you offline, but others cannot hit it because um, oh. it's uh, you know on a private network. One twenty seven thirty five forty seven five. Yeah, that's what it is. That oh one. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can hack hack that IP address. One twenty seven. Yes. Yeah. Hit it with so, everything you got. There you go. DDoS the heck out of that thing. So. The other, the other thing I, that uh, I didn't see in the man page that the help uh, shows you is that it will imitate mobile devices. So if you're uh, a lot of a lot of mobile apps use uh, APIs to interface with the database, and apparently SQL Map does a pretty decent job of imitating mobile devices when you're when you're uh, when you're doing your testing. So I haven't had a chance to to use the mobile device uh, bit yet. Uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll be able to do that in. Uh, in future and our and next it's uh it is ips aware or it can be you can set it for that right yeah it'll actually check for those devices when doing the testing so uh it, i guess it will know to avoid those or uh it'll also do waf i guess uh you know and 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 figure it's can it'll configure itself appropriately to bypass wafs so WAF, IPS, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's all the same. So Okay. That's pretty cool that it can uh detect it and then account for it. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Well I mean, uh like our like our buddy Mr. Johnson said, you can bypass WAFs pretty easily just like any IDS or IPS because they're all rules based, just like firewalls. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, they can be bypassed if if not configured properly and as as I know I've found Many of uh, many of our network devices that s- promote security in that way are probably not configured at their optimum levels. And by R, you mean the, the industry. Right? Yes, yes, <laughs> that, exactly. Okay, just wanted to make that clear. Yeah. Um, what else can can it do? Uh, I've I've heard, and I again, I did not have time to look through every part of SQL map because you know I I don't use it on a regular basis myself Uh, but it will access Windows registry settings or uh, when here I get my Kali instance up well is that after it gets root on a box or something well the I don't know because when I look at the H file, it says Windows Registry Access. It says these options can be used to access the backend database management system on the Windows Registry, and will it'll actually add, write, or delete registry keys. Oh crap! Because your registry is like a database too, so it actually attacks the registry itself. Yeah, yeah. So you could uh, you could probably use it to to gain access to registry. I wonder if the Windows Registry it can do that. If it could also do Active Directory as well, because you know, you connect to Active Directory over port 389, or if you're using uh, LDAP SSL, it's 636. If you could, uh, you know, it's a flat file database, isn't it? I mean, it shouldn't be any different than a than a SQLite type database for your Active Directory. That, I didn't think of that. Wow. Yeah. I wonder Makes if sense, it's possible though. to use SQL Map for that. That's a pretty so. cool feature. Yeah. But, you know, SQL map, like I said, you can do a dash H. I have it in Kali. It comes with Kali, of course. Everything comes in Kali. Uh, you can run it over specific proxies. Uh, you can ignore proxies if you have a, if you want to test it and you're on the inside and you don't care if you're wanting to test your IDS. Um, there's a safe mode. Uh, That's useful. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, the safe mode for this, it says safe URL. It says a URL to address, to visit frequently during testing. And then it'll test requests between two visits to a given safe URL. Um, you can even force SSL or HTTPS. And, you know, this is, uh, there's a lot going on on this, uh, on this application. I think uh, it's definitely worth, um, Yeah, you know, it's a it's a huge tool in the arsenal for pen testers that's for sure yeah exactly all the uh, really good pen testers use it now now why do you believe the blue team should should be using this on a on a regular basis what's your what's your impetus for for suggesting such madness well in my opinion and this is my opinion most hackers most pen testers are going to use automated tools um, almost exclusively. They really, with tools like SQL Map and how robust it is and how powerful it is, and uh, if you actually use it or see someone use it, it's very quick. And, and it's like a monkey could, could use it. You find a site that's vulnerable, uh, a black hat would, um, you do a simple test, and then you start using SQL Map, and you basically have, um, you know, you have complete ownage of that database. And in some cases, you can get root on a box, or at least an account on the on the box on the database server itself. You can pop shells. Yeah. It's so easy, and you don't yeah. even have to, you don't even have to learn how to. You don't even have to be a developer or no scripting or anything. You just need to know some basic commands that SQL Map will take. You have to spend 10 or 15 minutes learning how to use it, mm -hmm. and uh, or an hour in some cases if if you're not as uh, you know into programming or using these types of application. Okay, an hour. Take an hour, learn how to use it, and man, it is so powerful. Um, so my point is that. Even the worst hackers can use these automated tools and pop root on boxes. It's, mm -hmm. it's not that hard. So if you're trying to protect data, you need to know this and you need to use this to your advantage by using the same tools that they're going to use. You know, don't make yourself an easy target for these automated tools. I've seen pen testers come in, they do a Nessa scan on the network they're testing, they find um, you know, some really bad exploits, and then they pop in a uh, Metasploit and they get shell on a box and then they dump all the passwords and stuff. And it's so easy that, and, and you know, if you're, not, if you're not aware of these tools, if you don't know all the latest and greatest pen tester uh, techniques that are going on, you think, wow, I mean, this guy's awesome. He did all this, you know, hacking and he got root on six of our you know, most critical servers and um, when actually all he did was run a couple of tools and it was all laid out for him, basically. If It's if magic you until you understand it and then it's... Yeah. It, it's yeah. kind of like magic. Oh, well, uh, you know, actually, you know, uh, you know, the lady inside the box wasn't sawed in half. She actually, you know, it was a couple of mirrors or something. You know, it, yeah. if you understand that, uh, you'll uh, gain... Um, you'll be better prepared um, for this arsenal of hackers that's probably attacking your systems right now. So, um, basically know what they're going to use. Use those yourself and protect yourself from those automated tools. Yeah. And you're going to eliminate 90% of the problems. In my yeah, I think that, yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think that's a good point. If you're using the tools that the bad guys are going to use against yourself, you know, when it comes time for the bad guy to get to you, you know, on the list of, hey, sites he wants to hack, if he uses SQL Map or he uses NMAP to find vulnerabilities and he gets to your site and he doesn't find those, is he going to stick around to to a further you know attack you i mean mm -hmm. it doesn't it, it doesn't behoove him you know because he's looking at production he's like he's looking at you know he's got 25 sites to look at if he looks at you know 20 of them and gets to yours and goes well okay i can't find anything here you know on the surface do i want to dig 
or do I want to try the other four that I haven't tried yet? You know, you're, you're, if you, you, you don't want to be a hard, an easy target. Right. It, it's and like, these tools will make you a harder target because you're thinking like the bad guys. Yeah. It, it's kind of like, um, you don't have to, you don't have to be faster than the bear. You just have to be faster than the slowest guy running from the bear. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So this is, this is easy stuff. Use these tools, uh, test your, um, test your applications, your servers, whatever on these tools, and you're not going to be an easy target. And if you're an easy target, there's going to be a lot of people. I mean, we talk about um, uh, recon. You can recon with Google just uh, to find uh, a database that's exploitable. You just type in a couple of words in Google and you get a whole list of exploitable databases right there. So just, you know, that's what hackers do. They find exploitable databases and they go attack them and they see if they can get anything good out of it. When, when was the last time you searched on Google with a SQL statement, seeing what you found? Uh, this morning. <gasps> Did you have hey. express written permission to Google hack? <laughs> that's, that's not actually Google hacking. <laughs> I just did a Google search. It's kind of like driving by the store. You didn't break in the store. You didn't even go up to the window hardly. You just sure. drove, you just cruised by and looked from the street. Oh, yeah. See, so you... you you were cruising from the street, yelling out your window, select star from users where? <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's not hacking, right? It's doing recon. Anybody can do recon. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Okay, so so you, you're talking about blue team, and when we think blue team, you and I, we're thinking the information security weasels who are trying to explain to management why we need to secure our systems. Sure. But I think I think this could actually be used by people earlier than that. You know, we don't want it to get to production before we start testing it and go, oh yeah, there's there's problems. Because as many businesses, you know, when they're doing their software development lifecycle, they have, you know, they establish their requirements, they they do the coding, then they do QA and testing and then release to production. Mm -hmm. And no point in there are they saying, oh yeah, we also need to do, you know, the testing part doesn't mention security testing or, you know, we're just doing functionality testing, you know, for, for new new bells and whistles or, you know, we upgraded uh, our platform. Functionality testing, that. yeah, they're looking yeah. for bugs, right? Yeah. They're looking for their system actually breaking. They're looking for bugs, not necessarily security bugs, right? Sure. So at what point do you think that this should go in to that cycle? If, if say, the IS folks, the information security folks were, were smart and realized that this is probably a tool that developers could use or, or QA people could use to, to help speed their testing along. Um, I would say the cheapest point. Whatever's the cheapest. And... Um, industry standard is if you can catch it in development, it's going to cost you a lot less than if you catch it in production. And mm -hmm. so QA would be a middle ground that would cost a little bit more than development. So I would say push it to um, development if possible. A tool like SQL Map probably would be better used in development, you know? And, you know, why, why do I want to teach my developer, hacker, techniques and tools well you know developers don't want to spit out exploitable code any more than you want to put exploitable code into production right mm -hmm. you know if i were a developer and I, I was in a in a past life um i you know i don't want to put out bad code and by bad i mean e exploitable or code with a lot of bugs in it or didn't function properly so I think a majority of developers, uh, enterprise developers, are, uh, are going to likely have a uh, positive opinion of SQL Map and, and learning how to use it. Um, if, if you see what it can do, I mean, it's really cool, and it sparks interest. And I think by teaching... Uh, enterprise developers how to use SQL map and test it on their code um, they're more likely to be security aware so so do you 
you know, I, I've got this this idea of developers who code and they think that their code is perfect and that they don't, you know, they don't put out bugs. The yeah. bugs are just inherent in the in the you know the the Java itself. So how do how do you convince a developer that he needs to use this tool? Um, I use my vast array of social engineering techniques. <laughs> you know what? It's it's funny you 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 say that, but um, I got into a conversation last night with somebody on Twitter, and uh, she posted this thing. She was like, "You say you're so good at social engineering, yet your developers still have bugs in their code, and yeah. you can't get them to fix them." Uh, yeah, and I was like, "That's that's so very." <laughs> so very true. That's very applicable. Yeah. If you can't, you know, if you're, if you are, if you're such a good hacker, that's right. You should be able to socially engineer your management and your development into getting all the bugs squashed as, as soon as possible. So, um, what if, what if there was a way to, now let me, let me address your, your, your question. First of all, um, yeah, it depends on the developers. Some developers aren't going to listen to you, and that's just the nature of their personality or to the detriment of their career, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're just not – they think they're better than you, blah, 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 because they're a developer or whatever. But um, I think deep down inside or privately, they may test their code or – and it. You know, it all comes back to, are you going to have management buy-in for this? Um, are you going to have a culture of secure code? You know, and, and if you give them not only SQL Map, but a, but a few other tools that we may talk about uh, in the future, um, I think it would be a good thing. I mean, it can't hurt. And if one guy thinks he's better and doesn't want to test his code, well, maybe if you, you catch it yourself and it's already in production, and he may find out that, wow, he really didn't put it out there. So, you know, don't count on them testing it themselves. Give them the tools so they can test it before it gets into QA and production. But, you know, obviously, if you have a good information security program, like we talked about with Phil, you're going to be testing these applications uh, throughout with different uh, testing methods. So hopefully, eventually, you'll find something that does slip through the cracks. So it, it, it would behoove the blue team to insert itself into the software development process. Oh, of course. If, if, if you can't get the developers to do it, then you need to be at your change control board meetings or your, um, you know, get go talk to the developers and help them understand, hey, you know, when, when you get this build done before you send it to QA, you know, maybe you run it by us for a real quick scan to, to find out if there's, you know, you, we have a code scanner or we have a, a thing, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, get, get management buy-in to make sure that, you know, you're cool with the, I don't want to say, you know, get management's permission to talk to developers because make that sometimes. Yeah. Make that part of your strategy, right? Build the, yeah. build the framework, you know, of security into the SDLC and, and SDL. Yeah. yeah, secure development life cycle. Yeah. yeah, and, uh, you know, make sure that, um, you know, you get that instilled in the back of everyone's mind that, you know, we're putting out code that works, codes that, code that doesn't have bugs, but we're also putting out secure code as well. Yeah, and, you know, if, if management does have an issue with that, you can remind them of the last time that somebody found something on the production network that caused an issue, say mm -hmm. your website was hijacked because of a website vulnerability or uh, because the passwords were easily guessable or somebody dumped the database using SQL map to, you know, yeah. to, to find that stuff. And you can help, un help them understand that it is a cost benefit, which that may be what they're looking for because you coming in and going, oh, you know, you gotta, you gotta test this with SQL map. They may see that as an additional cost on the back end. Um, I'm hoping that in 2014 that our manager core uh, has gotten savvy enough to understand that 
fixing it, like you said, as early as possible is actually a cost saver because you don't have to go back and re-engineer on the back end. Yeah. I, I think issues or put in quick fixes or, you know, cause doing those quick fixes or those development things on the back end again, as an emergency causes other projects to slip because then you have to pull resources off of those projects to fix the, you know, the, Oh crap, our website was hacked all hands on deck that, that, that causes other projects to slide and causes other cost issues as well. Yeah. Um, that's a, uh, that's been, part of talks that I've been in lately that you, um, you know, management, I think upper management is well aware that uh, catching things on the back end is, is very costly. I mean, it's, Mm -hmm. it's not just two or three times, it's like 10 times or more costly than catching it in development. So that they, they're well aware of that. Now, one thing that uh, a good strategy to have when, when implementing this type of action is, um, <clears throat> you know, document, um, and, and it may not apply to development as much as it would QA and, and other areas, but document how, how this is helping your program. Oh, we use this tool in QA and we found these errors and mm-hmm. this is what it saved us. Um, you know, by implementing this tool, it took, it took some, it, there was cost involved, but look what happened because it found these things, you know, make sure you document, make sure you report that up to management and they will look at those and they'll go, Oh, okay. You know, I remember when you requested this, I remember we tried to resist it and now I'm seeing the benefits of it. We're getting, uh, we're getting, uh, you know, our money back or our cost back tenfold. And that's what you should yeah. bring up. Make sure that yeah. you have metrics, um, behind what, everything that you're trying to implement. Yeah, you want you want short term and and more importantly I think long term because some companies might think quarter to quarter. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to save, you know, we're actually going to spend money this quarter, we're going to, you know, we're going to we're going to lose $10,000 this quarter on, you know, development cycles or whatever, but in the long run we'll save 150,000. And in the future actually production or, you know, development costs will go down because we don't have to you know, budget for, you know, uh, further F ups later on. I know? was talking to some guys, um, two days ago about the product that they implemented and it cost, cost quite a bit. And it, it took a lot of, uh, capital, um, you know, personal capital to get, get this thing implemented, but they are constantly showing management. Oh, look, somebody had malware. We were able to mm-hmm. catch it, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, and then management goes, wow, that decision I made to implement this was actually a really good decision. And now I can report to my execs, you know, what a good, you know, because I, I spent some capital. Um, what, what do you call it when you have a relationship capital, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Reputation capital. Yeah. yeah, reputation. I put my, you know, a little bit of my reputation on the line to get this because I thought it was a good thing. And now we're reaping the benefits of that. Make them aware that your decision actually benefited the company, helped out and reduced costs, whatever, prevented. Look at that, SQL map. SQL map, it's free, but you actually, it'll actually pay you in the end, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, the tool is free, but implementing it has some costs, right? Some soft yep. costs involved. Yep. So so SQL map is a, uh, you know, to get back to where we were, where when we started the podcast, it's a really great tool for scanning your website-driven your or database driven websites or uh, database driven applications, mm-hmm. especially for mobile devices. And, uh, well also you know, not, it, not especially, but also for mobile devices. Yeah. True. Um, so let's see. Yeah. It's, it's a, uh, it's got a wide array of tests that it works on. You know, you got blind SQL injection. It also does that. What's blind SQL mm-hmm. injection. Well, it's the, it takes a lot longer than regular SQL injection you basically have to ask the database true or false questions like is the first letter in this field an a and we'll say depending on usually it's a timing based attack and it takes three seconds for it to get back and say yes it's an a or if it takes five seconds to come back and say 
no, it's not an A. Right. You'll actually you should... put a, a SQL map actually puts a timer in there and based on the response time, it'll know whether or not that injection was successful. You know, yeah. I'm going to wait five seconds. You know, if this was successful, do a, what do you, what do you call it? A sleep for five seconds. Right. Yeah. So exactly. If it takes exactly. five seconds to come back, you know, maybe it was a fluke. Okay. Sleep for 10 seconds now. Then I really know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, blind SQL injection, you don't have any response from the application. So you don't know if it was successful or not. So it uses time-based uh, attacks in that yep. manner. And that way it knows if, if it's exploitable. Yep. Does that. So you can, you can get SQL map uh, if you're not using Kali. Um, I'm sure it's in some kind of package manager software. If you're running Debian or Red Hat, you can get SQL map that way. Otherwise, uh, install Git and then uh, you go to sqlmap.org and it will give you the information, sqlmap.org, and you can clone the Git hub from there and then you know build it. And it runs off Python, so um, I would imagine most everything you need is already installed on your box. Uh, SQL map also has links to uh, the user's manual, which I just found as we were talking here. Apparently it's got more information involved in it. Um, apparently SQL map has support for MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, MS SQL, Microsoft Access, uh, which is odd because I don't really consider Access to be a database system. Uh, some people would. Uh, IBM DB2, SQLite, Firebird, Sybase, and MaxDB, SAP MaxDB database management systems. That's cool. It will support Boolean-based blind, time-based blind, error-based, union query, and stacked query in SQL injection types. There are actually two that I've never actually heard of, the stacked queries and the, um, the union query. I don't have a lot of experience with databases. So. I, I like how SQL map says um, when it's successful, when, when it, when it's not successful, it'll say this parameter is not exploitable or whatever, injectable, mm -hmm. whatever. But when it is successful, it'll just say um, the web server is Apache and the database is, you know, Microsoft SQL server. It'll just tell you that it yeah. won't say you have just found SQL injection. Congratulations. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, the one thing I would suggest not using SQL map for is regular database maintenance of your system. So don't use it as a way to connect and, you know, <laughs> And uh, add, you know, <laughs> you know, we really don't need that field in there. Let me... <laughs> yeah, we don't We don't need Toad. I've got SQL map here that I'm using for, for database management or whatever. I can insert, you know, tables whenever I want. That would be awesome if you just went to a DBA and, and you're like, ah, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't use that. I. I don't use Toad. I use SQL Map. SQL Map. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. SQL Map. Yeah, it's a great little hacker tool, but it also works for database administration. Yeah. So yeah, there's. It looks like. Uh, it looks like the man page is is crap, but this uh, the wiki the the user manual they have on uh, on their GitHub site is actually quite extensive. There's way more in here. So. Um, Hopefully we'll uh, we'll have a little bit more on SQL Map in the future because uh, it's we've we've just literally scratched the surface. So uh, yeah. it looks like we're the, we're running out of time though. So um, one thing I did want to talk about is um, you know we we actually are posting this about um, a week or two before Black Hat and we have in the hopper uh, an interview we did with Josh Sokol. And Josh Sokol, uh, he's based out of Austin. He works for National Instruments. Uh, he's the information security program owner. I've got it written down here. That's okay. the only way I knew it. I was like, wow. I, I actually wrote it down. That's good. Because uh, I was like, I don't want to screw that up again. Uh, another person's title and position. It's very odd that you got that right. Well, I wrote it down. Yeah. I know. I'm sorry. So, yeah, he, uh, he came on. He talked to us about a program. Uh, that he created uh, called Simple Risk, and it's a uh, uh, a web-based program that he uses to at National Instruments. He uh, they eat their own dog food in this case mm -hmm. to help um, risk management uh, purposes. The they you know put in all the risks and they they have uh, various. They have a risk uh, management program, unlike a lot of yes. companies that 
we may or may not know about. So, yep. Yeah. So he's uh, he's going to come in and over the next two weeks that you'll hear after this one, uh, he's going to discuss uh, Simple Risk. And uh, one of the reasons we had him on was because with Black Hat coming up, he's actually going to showcase that tool again at Black Hat Arsenal. So if you're going to Black Hat, he's going to be there talking about it. He talked about it last year, but it, he said he had a crap, ske- a crap slot. Uh, it was like the very last day after everybody was hung over and going to the airport. And it was early in the morning home. too, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So he was, uh, he's, he's got a better slot this time. And, uh, what, what day was that? It was like the, the August 6th, at 10 o'clock, August 6th at 10 AM, right? Yep. Okay. So, um, he, he will be at the Arsenal. And Arsenal, for, for those of you who are not going to Black Hat like myself, I found out, is the uh, is where people come and showcase tools that they've created. So he went last year and talked about Simple Risk, but he's done a lot of updates to it this year, and uh, he's been invited back to talk about it. So we were uh, very happy and very, uh, very privileged to have him on, and it was a great little interview. So... Um, I guess that's it for SQL Map. I think we're going to be uh, hopefully having some more on it uh, after our wildly successful NMAP video, which I'm going to put out part two of next month. Uh, hopefully, we'll we'll have a little something for for SQL Map as well. No promises, but yeah, you'll get to maybe showcase how easy it is and how powerful it is. Right? Yep, and you'll be amazed. I mean, if you've never seen it. Um, you can just dump a database one letter at a time if you need to. Um, yep. You can look at all the tables. Um, yep. Yeah. All the and it works well in uh, in Burp and, and Web Scarab. So, uh, yeah, get yourself some SQL Map and and just fiddle with it. You can grab uh, Samurai WTF, which uh, our our good friend Mr. Johnson uh, makes, and uh, you know, oh, start that up and then uh, get on another box and use SQL Map and and just beat the hell out of it. So. Yep, uh, SQL inject me or something. Yep, there you go. So that was uh, that's uh, SQL Map. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can find us on Twitter at Brian Brake at Betcher uh, We have a Facebook fan page which now has over two thousand followers. I don't know if it's because they just like what we're putting out or if I just you know the Facebook advertising is working. So. Um, 2000, I never actually thought we'd have more than a hundred. So, uh, but you can find us there, facebook.com forward slash <clears throat> breaking down security, B R A K E I N G breaking down security. So, um, that's it for this week, I guess. Mr. Betcher, do you have anything you want to say? No, we probably need to do one on the future on, uh, uh, or several on the future on other tools that, that you can use to, uh, in your software development life cycle. Uh, True. And there's hundreds of them, literally. And, you know, not every everything does the same thing. Yeah, I'm so. looking at the Arsenal thing, and there's all these other tools. Snoopy, I don't know what that is. And then there's Maltrieve, uh, uh, smartphone pen test framework. Oh, is... Wait a minute. That's that's Georgia. Yeah, is she going to be talking at Arsenal as well? Looks like it. She's at the awesome the next day, same time. Ten a.m. on the seventh. Oh, no, no, no. It's the sixth. Oh. Wait, let me click the seventh. Well, don't let's not get it wrong. I want people to go see Georgia's SPF if she's got it. She's um, she's competing with Joss there. It looks like on the sixth. Oh, okay. So she's speaking at the same time. So I guess you're going to have to pick and choose. Yep. Um, uh, you know, if you want to go and learn about smartphone pen testing, go see Georgia Veitman over there, uh, Black Hat Arsenal, or go see Josh Sokol's talk. It's on Simple Risk. They're at the same time. They're just at different uh, different tracks. Yeah, Station so. 7 and Station 8. There you go. All right. So um, that's it. You know, we're we're over time. You know, they're going to kick us out of here in a second. Yeah. Gonna shut this place down. So, um. For everybody, uh, well, for me and Mr. Betcher at Breaking Down Security, you, you have a great week, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you in a little while. Bye bye.